The Fox Project began after a recent trip to England. The first step, reviewing my photo references. I rarely let a photo determine my composition, but I really like the movement and tension created by the dramatic cropping in this shot. I recently started a series of paintings with animal patterned backgrounds, evoking a quirky pop art sensibility. The pairing of an animal with a repeated pattern playfully suggests the subject's ubiquity, commercial food value, or reproductive capacity. To create one of these backgrounds, I start by drawing the animal's silhouette. When finished, I scan my drawing into the computer crop and edit as needed, and then gradually piece together the overall pattern. Finally, I send the finished file off to a company that laser cuts my design into a custom stencil. Combining drawings from my photo reference and a printout of my background pattern, I create a full-scale study for the piece. Next, I black the back of the study with a number 2 pencil. Affix it to my painting panel. And carefully trace over all important lines with a hard lead pencil to transfer the image. Using ordinary masking tape, and a sharp X-Acto blade, I create a mask for the fox. Using color gesso and acrylics, I mix a background color. Then apply a base coat. I trace just within the boundaries of the fox's mask with a permanent marker so I can easily identify its position. And affix my background pattern stencil in place. Using high viscosity gesso and acrylics, I mix colors. and match them against the swatches I've developed for the colors of the fox silhouettes. Then apply thickly with a palette knife. When dry, I peel off the stencil. and the mask that protected my underdrawing. I've saved the negative of the original fox mask, and now I reapply it to the painting. Once again, using high viscosity gesso and acrylic paint, I mix colors for painting the actual fox. I place each color inside an ordinary plastic bag and snip a small hole in the tip. When I've mixed my full range of colors, 27 in this case, it's time to go to work. I pipe the paint through the hole in the tip of each plastic bag, much like icing through a cake decorator. 
This allows me to balance a degree of looseness with some measure of precision. In part, this technique is a way to keep me from fussing over extraneous details. Once dry, I remove the masking tape, and then fine-tune the edges. Next, I reapply the positive mask one last time. Mix a tinted, high-viscosity gesso a few shades lighter than the background base coat, and sponge it on to create interesting textures. Off comes the mask. And on goes a coat of a thinner, darker valued green gesso over the sponging. Low viscosity gesso tinted with liquid acrylics form the basis of a new palette for the fox. I paint over everything I've done thus far with this thinner gesso overcoat. Now it's time for perhaps the most unusual part in my process. Using a power sander with a 60 grit paper, I sand down the entire surface of the painting. Almost magically, the raised ridges of the impasto work come through, while the thinner gesso overcoat has filled in the cracks and valleys. Evocative textures, intriguing lost passages, and beautiful edges result. This leaves me with the improvisational looseness of a knife painting, only with a perfectly smooth surface ready for the next step in my process. Once up on the easel, it's time to lay out a new palette. Hooker Green DPU Permanent and Napthal Crimson combine to make a superior approximation of black. Burnt Sienna, Bronze Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Titanium White, Dioxazine Purple, and Prussian Blue round out the palette. A thin film of water on each color helps keep the paint hydrated as I work. Previous stages can result in some hard edges, so my first priority is to soften them. I allow the results of the impasto and sanding process to guide me, only making minor changes and clarifying where need be with delicate brushwork.
The idea is to enhance what my elaborate process gave me, without simply painting over it. As I near completion, I employ some more transparent acrylics, thinned with water, for final glazing. This is a great way to make minor adjustments in color and value without losing any of the underlying texture or detail. Lastly, it's time to punch in my darkest darks. and pop out my brightest highlights. Finally bringing the Fox project to completion. We've gone from inspiration to design to a value study to an impasto underpainting, yet more layers of impasto, a gesso overcoat, sanding down, and finally, minimal brushwork and transparent glazing. At long last, a finished painting.